Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Goldman and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so this is the week of the unusual vlogging. Uh, essentially, if you haven't seen the other part, uh, basically there are two exciting for me uh, but unrelated things I want to talk about this week in order to give both of them uh, that own space just for them to be talked about. I'm doing it in two separate vlogs. Uh, the reason why I am not doing it across two weeks is because one of the things that I wanted to talk about, which was the one that I did the first part of this vlog on, um, will get less relevant as we move away from the event. And the second thing that we talk about, uh, which is what this vlog is going to be on, is something that's going to get more relevant as the weeks move forward. And it just feels to me like it would be good to sort of get both of them done and both of them up and both of them out so that they are at their most relevant <laughs> uh, for the point in time of which they are being released. Um, I hope that makes sense. I apologise if it doesn't completely make sense. Uh, but that is what I'm doing. I probably won't ever do something like this again, but I may do something like this again in the future. It's all dependent on probably to do with this, th what this vlog is going to be about, uh, much more so than what the previous vlog is, going, was, is about. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I hope that makes sense. So yeah, th this is probably the word which may cause for something like this to happen again. And it's literally a case of I don't think I have like full 10 minutes worth of stuff to talk about. Uh, full, full sort of 15, 20 minutes worth, because that's exactly the average length of these vlogs, uh, worth of stuff to talk about for, for both of them. So it sort of makes sense to me just to sort of split them across the two and then sort of have like one normal size vlog just split into two parts. Yeah, sorry for that. <laughs> All right, so um, this one, uh, again, I, I, I put them as their exciting things for me, um, but I need to sort of put this one into a little bit of context because although it is an exciting step forward um, for me and it's an exciting prospect for me, um, it's not necessarily been born out of the most exciting of things um, and, and sort of borderline you know, to get away from the negative side of things. Um, I, there are better ways of putting that, I just can't think of what they are right now. Um, so to sort of contextualise this, obviously as you guys know, I came out as non-binary officially at the beginning of the year. Um, I'd sort of started coming out uh, before that and obviously I'd gone through all of my confusing stuff on a private level without really talking about it for years and years before that. Um, so one of the things um, when you do come out as, uh, as trans and in my case trans non-binary specifically, um, certainly at the age that I've come out um, as trans non-binary, um, a lot of the things and the thoughts and the feelings that have always been there in the background um, but just being sort of ignored or forced into contexts that don't quite fit them but makes easier sense because you don't really want to be dealing with it start to come to the surface so you get that initial kind of feeling of liberation feeling of uh, completion and I, I do still feel liberated, I do still feel complete, I do still feel like this is the right decision for me, I am non-binary, I am by gender, I do not uh, say that those things are, are less true. What I'm saying is that in acknowledging those things and in making those things part of myself, all of these thoughts and feelings and issues that I've, I've had that have been connected to it but I've not been able to sort of process start to come to the surface and start to become more pressing and start to become more relevant and um, I sort of talked about this a little bit in my blog about um, my chest and, and binders um, but that's not the only thing um, that sort of goes on in my head in, in relation to this um, it's not the only thing that can make me feel um, like my gender is being invalidated uh, that I'm being misgendered and stuff like that so 
uh, yeah, it, it, it's one of those things that although it's very positive that I've come out and it's very positive that I've started making my social transition and stuff like that, at the same time there are still other elements of it that are still less positive and there are things that I'm learning to deal with as best I can, um, but there are also things I don't feel I can necessarily 100% process and deal with on my own um, because it can be very confusing. As I said, when you're sort of going, when you're sort of, you're acknowledging that these things are part of you, but because you're not really fully acknowledging that they're part of you, you try to push them into boxes that aren't necessarily the right boxes for them. So uh, the, 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 exact, the, the obvious example I can give for this is uh, not knowing whether or not my feelings to do with my chest is uh, dysmorphic or dysphoric. Um, because obviously whilst I was trying to live as a cis female, um, I, was, I did a very good job of convincing myself that my feeling had to be dysmorphic because, uh, you know, it, it wasn't like I full stop hate the fact that I have breasts. I still don't full stop hate the fact that I have breasts. Um, I just am uncomfortable with the breasts that I have and I'm not sure if going forward, I would be happier not to have them at all, or if I would be happier if they were just more manageable um, and a smaller size. Um, but again, because you kind of convince yourself that it is dysmorphic feelings and not dysphoric feelings, I don't know if as I sort of move along and I sort of move through the process and I, I try other things and I try to figure myself out whether actually, no, I'm either it's a combination of the two that I am feeling both dysmorphic and dysphoric about them, um, or actually, no, I'm feeling more uh, dysphoric about them. It's just I've never allowed myself to process it as that. Um, at this stage, I don't know, and it is very difficult uh, set of emotions to kind of pick through and work through and, and to sort of figure out exactly what the right path is for me um, and I'm, I'm just using my, my chest as an example of this. This is not the only thing that I have these similar thoughts and feelings about where it's a case of I don't 100% know what the answer is because I've spent so much of my life putting energy into turning these issues into other things because I wasn't ready to admit that I was non binary. Um, or I wasn't fully able to process what these thoughts and feelings actually were for whatever reason. And I, I, the main one is because I wasn't ready to, to come out as non binary and to accept that I was non binary, even though I, I knew that I was. Um, so, the sort of like, these the, the, the are sort of like things that have been going on um, for the last few months anyway in the background. Um, so I've, I've always sort of had in my head that at some point I would um, basically go to my to my to my GP um, and get myself a referral to the local uh, gender clinic uh, so that I can get some gender counselling as a starting point so that I can figure out what it is that I want from my transition in terms of whether I actually I'm perfectly happy with just being a social transition and just like binding and whatever else it is that I've been doing to sort of save off these feelings or no actually I do need to sort of take a bit more of a medical path in order to truly accept my body and accept uh, myself and to feel comfortable with how I look and what I'm presenting to the world. At this stage I legitimately do not know what the right answer is for me because the thoughts and feelings I have are very messy and very confusing and they are allowed to be, they are 100% allowed to be. Um, so it is perfectly okay for me to kind of go, you know what, I don't know what the right course is for me, I need someone who has a bit more uh, understanding of the situation, who can help work through and help me pick through these emotions and these feelings that I've been having to try and figure out what it is that I, I need to, in order to feel 100% happy and comfortable with myself and with my body um, and to be my true authentic self 
100% of the time and not just, you know, when I've got X, Y, and Z in place and that makes me feel great and happy and euphoric um, and whatever else. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I was always sort of moving towards the point of wanting to, to sort of do that. Um, but the things that have kind of given me that sort of that final sort of push um, and the reason why it's now and not like a few months from now um, or whatever else. Um, so it's, it's two sort of major things. The first is the immense amount of stress that I'm under that's completely unrelated at work at the moment. Um, because that is taking up a lot of my headspace, the headspace that I had been using for sorting through and trying to get through these emotions on my own a little bit. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I need, yeah, your, your brain can only do so, so much at one time and you can only really process so much at one time. Um, so the fact that I'm trying to work really stressful and as much as I'm trying not to take that stress home with me so that I can to separate the two things and sort of process the two things separately it's it's difficult to do that it also doesn't help that i do have to put up with being misgendered a lot in work some of it from the new staff um some of it from the customers the old staff the, the experienced staff the, the staff that i you know have known for a while and and um get on with really well because you know we're We've known each other for a long time and they've seen me go through the initial part of the process. They're great, they're fine. They 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 gender me properly, they do everything properly and, and that's fine, that really does help. But like the new staff who don't know me that well, who haven't been told yet, and then obviously the customers who I you know it's none of their business. Um I do get a lot of misgendering in work, which means that's much I want to sort of keep these two things um to give them their own separate headspaces so that I can deal with the stress that is work at the moment and I can deal with um, all the, the stuff around my gender in its own time, in its own way and, and give it the room it needs to breathe so that I can pick through the mess that I have to deal with. As much as I want to give them the two separate spaces, I can't. Right now, it is not possible for me to, to give them their own separate spaces in order for me to um, not be completely overwhelmed. <laughs> And I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed um, at the moment because I'm, I'm just mentally, I, I can't really deal with it all. So that was definitely something that definitely pushed me forward into, into sort of doing this now. Um, and it's definitely one of the two main reasons for deciding that now. Now, I know it's going to be a little while before I actually get the referral. I know I'm going to you know, be waiting for a little bit. Um, and in the meantime, Sort of talking more openly about this kind of stuff and talking to the friends and the family a little bit more openly about this kind of stuff is definitely going to help and, and be a good start to all of this um but in sort of like the long term i i definitely need to be talking to um, some professionals just to get guidance to um help me really certify what it is that you know how i want things to go forward um the other reason, um, and this was def this is definitely the one that kind of gave me the, the bigger kind of push um, for talking to my to my GP um, about this stuff, um, is when I got my uh, second vaccination, which was I think two weeks ago now at this point. Um, so I think I'm fully vaccinated now. <laughs> um, but yeah, when I went for my vaccination, um, I was sat down, and so I had my, my they then mean badge on my bag, and that was fairly visible whilst I was there. Um, and obviously, because I've not said anything to my my, my doctor so before that point, there's nothing on my records saying that I am non-binary or that I prefer they their pronouns or anything like that. Um, so obviously, I was there uh, getting my uh, doing like the pre-injection stuff. Um, and I mentioned to the person that after I got the first injection, a week later, I got a little bit of a rash in my arm. Um, and she'd not come across that before, so she, she had to bring the doctor over. And then there was a lot of misgendering. And I knew I couldn't say anything because obviously it wasn't on my records or anything at that point. So um, I just basically 
bit better and you know, just take it as it were. And um, that really sort of made me go, okay, I really don't feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable with that situation. We didn't like that situation. Going forward, I need to um, make sure that I am open with the medical people that are dealing with me in order to do that. The first place I need to do is I need to speak to my, to my doctors so that they've got it on my record so that then going forward, um, I can you know basically correct people and not feel like I shouldn't be correcting people because I should be correcting people. Um, I find it difficult enough to correct people <laughs> when I know I should be correcting people. Um, and in a situation like that, yeah, just, just my own sort of, my own sort of level of comfort um it was sort of like the final push i needed to kind of go okay i need to sort of speak to my, my doctors about it and if i'm just going to be speaking to them about it anyway i should at that point also be asking for the help that i need um going forward uh because i know there's going to be a wait and uh yeah it, it will just make things like easier in the long run um so yeah um i would say from my point of view, knowing that the referral's gone through, knowing that my records um, have, have uh, the, the doctor referring to me would be there for like I can access my like, can access my records online, and um, so like a day or so after I went on and I, I saw like the consultation notes, um, and the, the the doctor that uh, did it sort of like uh, the correct pronouns, and I saw my referral letter letter as well, so. From my point of view, it's very sort of exciting in terms of this feels like the next step. Um, this feels like the next thing that I have to, to get through or to get through. <laughs> this feels like the next thing that I need to do in order to um, progress with my transition and to figure out where I want my pro um, where I want my transition to go in order for me to be one hundred percent comfortable and happy with, with myself and who I am and to be you know my true authentic self and and stuff like that so yeah it's yeah I, I know a lot of this vlog has been kind of like you know focusing on the sort of the negative reasons why I need this and why I'm going for this but the actual reality of it is yeah this is this is something that's going to be good yeah it's going to be a little bit of a wait and I know it's going to be a little bit of a wait I am prepared for it to be a little bit of a wait but it's kind of that push I kind of needed um because I know that, you know, with how messy and complicated a lot of these thoughts and feelings and stuff that I'm dealing with and have been dealing with are, um, they're only going to get, like, more complicated and more messy if I continue trying to deal with it on my own when I've got other things and other stresses kind of going on in my life at the moment. So it feels like this is a really important step for me and I said it's a really exciting step for me as well because I am now... Uh, like it's, it now feels like a little bit more official <laughs> um and I know that sounds like really weird because you know me coming out should just make it official um but it feels more official uh to have like spoken to to a doctor about it and, and to have it like on my medical records now and uh, yeah uh yeah <laughs> I don't know what more to say there um, okay, so um, if you're interested in whatever, whatever it was I talked about in part one of this split vlog, um, then I advise you go check out part one as well. Um, I hope you found this one sort of interesting. Um, I'm definitely going to be vlogging more about my journey as things go on, um, so I hope you're all looking forward to hearing more about that as well. Um, I hope you're looking forward to whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time, and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!